Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the Glasgow Coma Scale. And as always, whenever you get done watching this YouTube video, you can access the free quiz that will test you on this content. So let's get started. The Glasgow Coma Scale is used to assess a patient's level of consciousness. And level of consciousness is how alert and responsive a patient is to their environment and the stimuli around them. So in order to be alert and responsive to your environment with all of its stimuli, you have to have really good brain functioning. Therefore, this tool is really helpful in evaluating patients who've experienced traumatic brain injuries or other conditions where brain functioning and consciousness is altered. So we can use this tool to calculate a specific score. So in practice, you may hear someone say their patient has a GCS of seven or a GCS of 10. Whenever they say this, they are referring to the Glasgow Coma Scale. That is where those letters GCS come from. Now when assessing the GCS, you wanna make sure that you get a baseline score on your patient. You wanna know where they started at. And then throughout your shift, make sure you are often reassessing the GCS per your facility's protocol. Because we wanna be able to look at their score and say, okay, they're improving, they're not really changing, or they're deteriorating. Because level of consciousness tells us so much about our patient. Any changes in level of consciousness could be a warning sign that something is going on with our patient and we need to investigate it. So this tool assesses three responses by the patient to a type of stimuli. And those three responses include eye-opening response, verbal response, and motor response. So to help test a patient for their best response in these areas, you may have to use some type of stimuli. And this stimuli can be as simple as a verbal stimulus to the patient to a little bit more of an involved one where you have to touch the patient and deliver a painful or pressure stimulus. Now let me talk a little bit about the pressure painful stimuli. There are two types that you can do to a patient to get a response. One type is called a central stimuli, and the other one is a peripheral stimuli. A central stimuli is when pressure is applied to the center of the body or its core to create pain. And this tests the brain's response to that pressure slash pain. So there's a few ways you can do this. One way that's typically used first is through the trapezius squeeze. And you use your index finger and your thumb and squeeze about one and a half to two inches of the trapezius muscle. And as you do this, you will start out and increase the intensity or pressure on that muscle for up to 10 seconds and then note how the patient responds. If no response is noted, then you could move to supraorbital pressure. And this is found around the eyes. If you go to the eyebrow and go to the inner part and you just feel with your thumb, you can feel a notch. And here you will gradually apply pressure for up to 10 seconds to that notch and note the patient's response. Now it's important to note before you use these pressure techniques to achieve a response in your patient, that your patient doesn't have some type of injury. So for instance, if your patient has some facial fractures, especially around the eyes, you would want to avoid using the supraorbital pressure technique because this could cause further damage. Now another type of central stimuli that can be used is called the sternal rub. However, it's really not recommended to use this anymore because it can cause bruising in patients. The next type is called peripheral stimuli, and this is where pressure is applied to a peripheral extremity, for instance, like the fingernail bed, and this creates pain, and this will actually help test the spinal cord's response to pain. Now let's look at the scoring for this scale. So a patient can score anywhere between a three to a 15. The higher the score, the better. So they can't score any less than a three and no higher than a 15. So if a patient gets a 15, that means that they are alert and awake and we are really happy about that. If they score an eight or less, that means that they are in a coma and usually require intubation because those airway reflexes that help protect us aren't working too well. And then if they score a three, this is the lowest score possible. There's a high rate of death whenever a patient scores this and they are in a very deep coma, usually with a severe head injury. Now, as I pointed out earlier, 
this tool is really good at helping us evaluate patients with a traumatic brain injury. So we can look at those scores and we can sort of group them with either mild, moderate, or a severe brain injury. So a score of three to eight would mean severe brain injury. Nine to 12 would mean moderate brain injury. And 13 to 15 would mean mild brain injury. So with this scale, each of these three response categories has their own points. And we will take those points, add them up, and we get a total GCS. So for eye opening response, the max amount the patient can get is four points with a minimum of one. It's never zero. If you can't test it, it would be NT for not testable. Verbal response, the max is five. Again, the minimum is one. There's no zero. Can't test it, put NT. And then for motor, the max is six. Minimum is one. So remember in this order, EVM for eye verbal motor. And then remember four, five, six. Four is the max for I, five is the max for verbal, and six is the max for motor. So we add all that up and we get a total GCS. Now the total GCS is important, but also these subscores that we get from each of the response categories is just as important. So remember that whenever it's being reported that you will also usually see those subscores with it. So you may see it like GCS of seven. So they have an E, of two, a V of two, and an M of three. Now, an important thing to note before you perform this scale assessment is to make sure that your patient doesn't have anything that could affect their ability to respond in any of these three categories. For instance, let's say your patient is paralyzed. Well, that is going to affect their motor response. Or if they're intubated, it's gonna limit their verbal response. Or if they have any injuries to their face or any other bones, or if they have facial swelling, it's going to affect their ability to open their eyes. Along with any type of sedation, or if they're hard of hearing or have mental deficits. Now the reason we want to know this is because one, we want to make sure we're getting the best response out of our patient for these categories. But we also want to make sure that we're interpreting their GCS score right that we have a good idea about what's going on with our patient. Because for instance, let's say our patient is intubated. Well, they have a tube in their throat. We're gonna have a lot of difficulty getting a verbal response out of them. So with this, we wouldn't give them a one because we can't test it. We don't know if they wouldn't have a response. So instead they would have NT, not testable. But for eye opening, for E, they got a two. And for motor M, they got a four. So they have a GCS of six, but that doesn't give us the whole idea of what's going on with them. So it would look like a six with a T beside of it, telling the person we're reporting this to or who's looking at this that they're intubated. So you'd wanna take it a step further and look at those subscores. And you would look at the E, which was a two. You would look at the V, which doesn't tell you much, but it would have a T with it telling you they're intubated. And then an M, which would have a four. So that would help give you a little bit of a better idea of what's going on with the patient and lets us know, hey, yeah, it says six, but we weren't really able to test their verbal response because they're intubated. And possibly it might be a little bit higher, but we don't know at this time. So now let's look at this scale in depth. So the first thing what you want to assess is the eye opening response. So the E, again, the max amount of points you can get is four with a minimum of one and if you can't test it let's say their eyes are swollen shut or they have some crazy injuries to their eye it'd be not testable it'd be NT so the patient can get four points if their eyes are open opening spontaneously so let's say you walk into the room and your patient's looking around and their eyes are open they would get four points they would get three points let's say if your patient's eyes are closed but when you walk into the room and they're keeping them closed but you talk to them, you introduce yourself, so you provide some verbal stimulus and their eyes open. That would be three points. But let's say, walk into the room, you do that, nothing happens, they don't respond to that sound. You will wanna take it a little further and you would want to apply a pressure stimulus. And that's what we talked about at the beginning of the lecture. So with this, we're going to do a peripheral stimulus. And with this, what you can do is you can take a pen, a pen light, whatever you have, and you're going to take it and you're going to apply it to the nail bed of a finger. And if you do this to yourself, it's a little uncomfortable. So apply that and gradually 
increase pressure over 10 seconds and see the response. If their eyes open up to this, they get two points. Now let's say you do all of that, nothing happens, those eyes are still closed, it would be no response and they would get a one. Next is verbal response, so the V. With this again, you can get a max of five points with a minimum of one. And if you can't test it, let's say because they're intubated or something like that, it would be not testable. So the patient would get five points if they're oriented. But how do we know if they're oriented? Well, you have to ask them a series of questions. So you could ask them to state their full name, their date of birth, the month or the year, or where they're located, where are they at right now? And if they answer all that successfully, they're oriented so they get five points. They would get four points if they were confused. So if they answered any of those questions with something that tells you that oh they don't really know for instance like where they're at they're in the hospital but they say that they're at home or the year is 2022 but they say it's 1978 or if they're not able to state their name they say they're someone else they're confused so we give them four points three points would be whenever you ask them questions they just start saying words that make absolutely no sense to those questions so we would give them three so they're inappropriate word usage Two points would be that they just make sounds to those questions. So no words, it's usually moaning and groaning. And so we'd give them two. And then one point, whenever you ask them those questions, you have no response, so it would be one point. And finally, we have motor response, so M. With this, the patient can get a max of six points with a minimum of one. And if you can't test it because, let's say they're sedated or paralyzed, it would be NT for not testable. So a patient can get six points if they can obey a verbal motor command that you tell them to do. So with this, it needs to be at least two steps because we really want to make sure that the patient's doing this and it's not really a reflex. So what you want to do is you can have the patient like lift up their hands or open their hands, tell them to grasp, grasp your fingers as hard as they can and then let go. Or you can have the patient open their mouth and stick out the tongue. If they can do this all successfully, they're good to go. So we give them six points. But let's say the patient cannot do this. Well, you gotta take it a step further and you have to apply one of those pressure slash painful stimuli that we talked about earlier. And you wanna use a central stimuli. So first, start out with the trapezius squeeze. If you get no response, move to the supraorbital pressure and see what happens. Now the patient will get five points if they try to localize this pressure stimulus that you're applying. This is because that brain is trying to locate that stimulus and it's trying to remove it. So whenever this occurs, what you're gonna see is that, let's say you do the trapezius squeeze, the patient's arm is going to bend at the elbow and move the arm and hand up above the collarbone trying to remove that pain. Now the patient will get four points if they try to withdraw from this pressure stimulus. Hence we refer to this as normal flexion. So the brain is trying to withdraw itself from the painful stimulus instead of trying to locate it and remove it like before. So when this stimulus is applied through the trapezius squeeze, the patient flexes, hence bends the elbow, but quickly withdraws it from that stimulus. And note, there's no rotating of the wrist. The hand and arm never make it up to that pressure stimulus or up to that collarbone. So it doesn't locate it, but it withdraws from it. Now three points is awarded if you see abnormal flexion. And we refer to this as decorticate posturing. And I want you to remember the COR, the core in decorticate, because it's key in helping you remember how this presents. So when the stimulus is applied through the trapezius squeeze, the patient flexes the elbow gradually and moves the arm to the center, hence the core of the body, with pronation of the forearm and flexion of the wrist. And the hands will turn into fists. There won't be the withdrawal from the stimulus like in the previous response. And whenever you see this, it's not good. It means that our cortex is affected. And then two points is awarded if you see extension. And this is known as the cerebrate posturing. And look at the word decerebrate. Look at all of those E's. There's actually four of them. And that can help you remember that this is extension. So when the stimulus is applied with this trapezius squeeze, the patient will extend the elbow with internal rotation of the arm 
And this is actually worst posturing of all the types and it's not a good sign. It tells us that our brain stem is affected. And then the patient will receive one point if you applied this stimulus and there's absolutely no response at all. So now let me test your knowledge and see if you could calculate the GCS. Here our patient is able to open their eyes whenever pressure is applied to the nail bed. And whenever I ask some questions, they only make sounds to the questions, no words. And then whenever I test the motor response, I see this. Here our patient has a GCS of nine. So they have an E of two, which means that they're able to open their eyes when I applied pressure to their nail bed. They have a V of two. They only make sounds whenever I ask them questions to see if they're oriented or not. And then they have an M of five. They were able to localize pain whenever I applied a trapezius squeeze. Okay, so that wraps up this review over the Glasgow Coma Scale. And don't forget to access the free quiz in the YouTube description below.